Welcome in to Steelers Talk Yenzers. My name is Jack Sperry, your host. And on today's show, I'm going to be talking about some of the QB craziness that is going on after the signing of Mason Rudolph. And then I'm also going to be breaking down the salary cap here after the Steelers have made a couple moves here post NFL draft, give you guys an update on that front. And then also, I'm going to be giving you the latest on Quan Alexander, who visited the Pittsburgh Steelers last night. But before we get into today's action, go ahead and do me a favor here and share today's video to get a shout out on tomorrow's Steelers Talk live show. Chugs and I will be going live at 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern time tomorrow, so make sure you turn on your notifications so uh, you know when we go live. But if you want to get a shout out on tomorrow's show, you can go ahead and click that share button below this video here on YouTube. Select the Twitter icon, click post to Twitter, and then you got to tag me. This is the important part, so I know that you're actually sharing this. You got to you got to tag me here at Jack underscore Sperry for a retweet. Every single person that shares this will get a retweet, and the first ten people to uh, to share this video will get a shout out on tomorrow's live show. So now let's start with the quarterback craziness that is going on with the Pittsburgh Steelers here after the signing of Mason Rudolph. Yesterday the news was broken by Ari Marov and he said the Steelers are expected to re-sign QB Mason Rudolph bringing him back for a sixth season per multiple reports. He'll be in the facility tomorrow. So they're signing him on a one-year deal today. He's coming to the facility for a visit, whatever, probably doing some medical checks, and then he is signing his contract. As uh, I'm filming this video, he has not signed his contract, but uh, by the time that you're watching this video later today, possibly, he probably, he probably has signed his contract. So we don't know the exact details of the contract. I, I'd assume it's pretty close to the vet minimum at this point because they, the, 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 the plan here is that he's going to be the quarterback three. Mitchell Trubisky, there's been some rumors circulating around Steelers' Twitter that he could potentially get cut because you're bringing back Mason Rudolph, somebody that you could potentially uh, trust as a, as a number two quarterback on your roster and you can save $8 million in cap space if you cut Trubisky. However, Jerry Dulac, one of the most respected uh, reporters out there, has a lot of connections inside the Pittsburgh Steelers building, said yesterday that the Steelers will be very clear with Mason Rudolph about his role. He will be the number three quarterback. Mitch is number two. Two. Uh, and I personally, I'm not sure how I feel about this. I would maybe rather go out and 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 try to cut Mitchell uh, to get a better, to get some more cap space here, kind of uh, supplement. Uh, the cap space that the, that the Steelers can, so they can go out and get an, another free agent, somebody that like a Justin Houston or Kyle Van Noy or maybe a Quan Alexander. We'll be talking about him later on in the show. But let me know which guy would you rather have for their price right now? Would you rather have Mitchell Trubisky as the quarterback to type MT for Mitch? If you'd rather have Mason Rudolph, uh, type MR. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's show. So whenever you get a chance here, YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here during this video. It's just the way the platform works, guys. Just go ahead and take advantage of that time by going to the comment section, finding that pinned comment, and answering today's question. So now I want to break down the salary cap situation after the Steelers have signed a couple of their rookies. You know, they're bringing back Mason Rudolph. I want to let you guys know what the rub is on that sort of stuff. And right now the Steelers have a, just over $8 million available uh, in cap space according to various different sources over the cap. Spo track, uh, of course, Steelers Depot did a breakdown of this as well, which is the numbers I'm using for this video. And, you know, this isn't taking into account. I want to make sure that I'm clear on this. The Steelers have not signed Mason Rudolph. We don't know the number that he is going to be uh, signed for here. And then you haven't signed your top rookies so far in Broderick Jones, uh, Joey Porter Jr., and Keanu Benson. Everyone drafted after those guys has been signed at this point. So they're still, they're still looking to figure out those deals for those top rookies. And when you... Uh, uh, you bring in the estimations of what those rookies are expected to sign for. The Steelers just have about $3.5 million left to spend in NFL free agency. And for guys like Kwan Alexander, maybe a Justin Houston, a Kyle Van Noy, somebody that you might bring in, that might not quite be enough to bring in one of those guys. So right now the updated cap space is about $4.5 million here, which, you know, is, is you know you can maybe get something done for that amount of money. I mean, I think Kwan Alexander, somebody that's been a starter in this league for a long time. He's a pro bowler. Uh, he's somebody 
somebody that might look for a little bit more than $4.5 million per year, and I don't think the Steelers want to get that close uh, to the, the, the to the cap there. And, you know, but if you take a look at Trubisky and if you cut him, you could have 12.57 because you get that additional $8 million. And if you have $12.57 million left to spend in the bank, I think you could absolutely, absolutely go out and get maybe even two players. The Steelers have three players uh, that they could add to their 90-man roster here before training camp. And if you could add, you know, maybe a Kyle Van Noy on the outside, to be an outside linebacker and then a Kawan Alexander to play inside linebacker. I think those would be two really nice moves for the Steelers to make. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Which NFL free agent do you want the Steelers to sign next? It could be nobody if you think they're good. It could be Kwan Alexander if you think it's him. If you think it's uh, Kyle Van Noy. Whatever you want, guys, go ahead and put your name down in the comment section. And speaking of Kwan Alexander, he visited the Pittsburgh Steelers last night. And usually the way that it works with the Steelers is, you know, if you bring a guy in for a visit, they don't leave without a deal. So this was reported by Adam Schefter last night here. He says Jets free agent and former Pro Bowl linebacker Kwan Alexander is visiting the Steelers tonight. That was uh, sent out yesterday. And you take a look at Kwan's stats throughout the year. He's been a very, very solid player throughout his career, made the Pro Bowl in 20 2017, and he's still a very productive player. He had his lowest missed tackle rate with the Jets last year of his entire career. So this guy is is not only really, really good, but he's also getting better, and he's he's gotten better in terms of uh, his tackling over the course of his career. And you can see that last year with the 69 tackles. You can bring him in here with Cole Holcomb and Landon Roberts and let him compete for a starting job. He's, he's had success in San Francisco, in New York, in Tampa Bay. He's played in a bunch of different systems. I think he would work well in Mike Tomlin's defense. You did bring in Cole Holcomb and Landon Roberts for a reason. The Steelers do like them, and you have Mark Robinson kind of waiting in the wings there, but adding a guy like Juan Robinson, particularly for the right price, I think would be a good move for the Steelers to make, but the clock is ticking. He did have his uh, visit yesterday. I'm sure that they're doing medical checks and all that different stuff, but I will say right now that the longer we get from that visit, the, least, the less likely it is that he ends up signing. We have seen the Steelers bring in a free agent on a visit this year, and Bud Dupree, that a lot of people thought was going to sign with the Steelers and it turned out that the Steelers passed or that Bud Dupree wanted something and the Steelers wanted, wanted something else and it just didn't work out. So it's certainly possible that despite the visit, Alexander won't become a Pittsburgh Steeler and the further we get away from that visit, uh, the, less likely, the less likely it is that he is going to sign. So would Alexander be a starter for the Pittsburgh Steelers if he were signed? Would he start over Cole Holcomb or Landon Roberts? Let me know right now in the comment section by typing yes or by typing no. So before I go here, uh, I want to ponder a question to you guys. How good is the Pittsburgh Steelers offense? Where does it rank among other NFL teams? Well, Bleacher Report came out with an article the other day, and they think that the Pittsburgh Steelers have the 21st best offense in the National Football League. That is below average, and I, I just think that's a little bit low personally, but this is what Alex Ballantyne, the author of the article, had to say. It's important to remember that Pickett, uh, that Pickett is still a second-year quarterback, Joe Jones, uh, talking about Broderick Jones, could have some growing pains as a rookie left tackle, and Robinson could simply not be the player he used to be. There's, there's a reason for optimism, but there's also reason for it to be cautious optimism. Now, I, the only way I could really see this Steelers offense not be being a lot better than it was last season is if Matt Canada is just straight up garbage. No, I mean, we've seen his play calling over the last couple of years. It's not that great. It's not that creative. But they are switching to more of a power-based run scheme. And I think that the finessing, the scheming stuff up, I think all that stuff is kind of goes by the wayside just a little bit because in a power scheme, you just put big bodies on the on the on the offensive line and say, go down block. Go get a, get a hat on a hat and just move somebody. And it takes a lot less coaching. I think the Steelers have done a good job bringing in some really nice power blockers this offseason. I think at the end of the day, they're going to be a, at least an average offense. Now, is it going to be top five, to even top ten? I mean, that's, I mean, we can still wait and see on how just how good Kenny Pickett is, all these different things, the switches that Matt Canada makes to his scheme. But I think that with this defense, you don't need like an amazing 
amazing offense from the Pittsburgh Steelers to be a successful football team. As long as, as you can establish the run, Kenny Pickett can, can establish a nice connection with his receivers, etc. I think that this offense can be pretty darn good, and then with the elite defense I expect the Steelers to have, I think the Steelers can really rack up the W's in 2023. So will the Pittsburgh Steelers offense be over or under 21st in the league next season? Do you think uh, Bleach Report got it about right? Do you think they, they got too low? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Can't wait to see how you're feeling about the Steelers offense. Go ahead and click that subscribe button for me right now, guys. That's going to be it for today's video. But if you want more videos, you can check out the ones that we've just put out earlier this week, last week, all that good stuff. Turn on your notifications as well because we are going live tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern time. You guys are not going to want to miss that. So make sure you click that subscribe button and turn on your notifications.